Maintaining your lawn and garden is hard, back-breaking work. It's a constant battle of trying to raise your own plants or removing all the weeds that try and grow up with them. And when you're done, there's nothing more refreshing than kicking back with an ice-cold beer or a glass of wine. But what if you could put all these weeds to use and make yourself a nice hard beverage? Well, that's what I'm gonna try using two of the most notorious weeds, crabgrass and dandelions. First up, crabgrass. Best known today as an unattractive nuisance, crabgrass was actually brought over to the US by immigrants to be used as a source of food for early homesteaders. Before this, it was commonly grown in Germany and Poland as an edible grain, used similarly as wheat to make flour or even beer. I've previously grown my own wheat to make both flour and beer, and crabgrass was one of the annoying plants that always tried to sneak up into my crops. The worst part of weeding was probably the wheat. Now the wheat is a grass, and when it grows up, it looks almost identical to all the other wild grasses that grow up with it. So trying to weed it, I feel like I kind of became an expert of the different types of grass, because I have to go through it and I have to see what is wheat and what isn't. And it was especially frustrating in the beginning because as wheat starts out, it looks almost identical to crabgrass. So I wasn't sure if I was, did I pull the right stuff? Or is this just crabgrass that's left over? But both plants are grasses. So brewing crabgrass should be similar to wheat beer. In my research, I wasn't able to find much information on the actual process of how exactly to do it. So I'm gonna be going in a little blind. But so far, in the variety of different items I've learned how to brew, wine, tequila, cider, and wheat beer, the basic formula is pretty straightforward. Extract the sugars from your source, add yeast, and let it ferment. Since crabgrass is most similar to wheat, I'm mostly just gonna be repeating the process I learned when I made wheat beer, just this time without any help. But first, to grow my crabgrass, it was simply a matter of just waiting for them to invite themselves into my garden this summer and resist that urge to pull them out. The crabgrass was surprisingly productive, and once it started to produce seeds midsummer, I could harvest seeds every few days and get a large amount. Whereas with my wheat, it was just one harvest after a very long growing season. But with the tiny size of the crabgrass and how much work it is to continuously harvest over and over again, I can see why wheat is the more preferred grain for agriculture. So I have all these seed from the crabgrass that I collected from my garden this summer. And I tried to do the malting process of them to convert the starch in them to sugar. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to work. Not many of them actually germinated. I had one tray that started to, I think there's some right combination of moisture that's different than when I did it with wheat. And for the most part, didn't have much success. I did have one tray that kind of started to, so I'm killing that in the oven. Toasty. For the rest, I'm gonna use an enzyme called amylase, which I previously used to make corn syrup out of corn. So that's kind of an alternative to the natural process of malting, which turns these starches into sugars. Instead, we're just gonna use an enzyme and we'll end up with similar results, probably a little bit less flavor to it, and, uh, but it should still work. First step now is to take a pot of water and heat it to around 165 degrees, and then add all of the grain to soak up the starches, which will then convert to sugar with the amylase. Add the seeds to the water and let it sit for about 30 minutes. It's a little bit over temperature, which I think is good. Uh, it was actually recommended to me to kind of scorch the seeds a little bit to add a little bit of extra flavor since I wasn't able to malt them. Wait 30 minutes and we'll have our malt. Next, the biggest seeds is removed and wrung out. Then it's rinsed a second time to extract any remaining starches. Let it cool a little bit. Now I'm gonna add about a gram and a half of the amylase to start off at. Mix that in. And let it react for about 10 minutes. All right, so at this point, hopefully all the starch in it has converted into sugar. And now I'm going to bring it to a boil and let it sit for 60 minutes. Then the batch is quickly chilled in an ice water bath while I sanitize a fermentation vessel, which it'll be poured into next. Yeah, so it looks a little milky now, but should clear up. And hopefully we have some flavor to it. Probably wanna add yeast. 
Yeah, you want to. <laughs> oh yeah, the guys at the store, uh, we're not quite sure what to recommend. They gave, uh, had to look it up and they're, they weren't very sure. Just because we're using the amylase, it doesn't have much flavor. So I wanted something that would uh, go well with it. And they ended up choosing uh, English ale yeast. I don't remember why. actual yeast. All right, got it sealed up. Give it a week or two and uh, should have some beer hopefully or something. We'll see how it tastes. Well, the beer ferments, now to make some wine out of dandelions. But first, we'll need to collect some flowers. Pulling the petals from the flowers, they are then boiled and added to a vessel with a fair amount of the sugar I've made before added. Add some yeast and then just need to ferment for a few weeks. Meanwhile, the beer should hopefully be done fermenting and be ready to bottle. Ugh, smells like yeast. After carefully sanitizing everything, I boil the mix of honey and water and poured a little into each bottle. Then I used a siphon to fill in the bottles with the beer, and then capped them. The extra honey I added will feed the remaining yeast and cause just a little bit of fermentation that will carbonate the beers inside their bottles. So I bottled some of my beer and let it carbonate for a few days. How to try it all. I have some of the wine and the beer. Here's the original fermenting vessels. The wine actually cleared up pretty good. I used some of the bentonite clay we collected in Utah. We saw in the winery in Solvang, they use the same clay to clarify it. So I tried using it on this wine. It did a pretty good job and it's looks really nice. It's like a golden dandelion color. I think that's gonna turn out good. The beer over is, I think it cleared up a little bit, but it's still pretty murky. Last I checked, it smells pretty horrible. Supposedly after you bottle it and it starts to carbonate, that should dissipate some, but uh, I'm pretty skeptical. I don't know how well it's gonna turn out. It also doesn't really look like beer. It looks like lemonade. I don't know what that means. First off, I'm gonna give the dandelion wine that I made with the petals Andy and I collected. It smells like wine. Passes the, you know, smell test. It smells just like wine. Hmm, that's pretty good. Uh, it's like a sweet, very sweet white wine, I'd say. Has a very earthy taste. I don't know tasting terms, so I can't really give an accurate assessment, but it's good. It's kind of reminiscent of the tequila that we had in Mexico. It has a lot of the same notes that the tequila had. I don't know, it's almost like honey. And there wasn't any honey added to it, but very smooth, like honey. I didn't use honey at all, but maybe it you know, has something to do with the pollination with the bees. Definitely tastes like a white wine. It's got smoothness. Yeah, that tastes like the park across the street from my house. Wow. That's probably what we're tasting is uh, some soccer games. Yeah, I would buy this wine. Yeah, I mean, for something that was supposed to be sitting in my closet for two weeks and ended up being in there for six months, uh, <laughs> it tasted pretty good. I thought it would be rotten or spoiled and uh, yeah, without even trying hard, this is probably the best wine I've made. I didn't use traditional yeast in this. I used baker's yeast just you know from the grocery store, so. I like it. I think it turned out really good. Let's try the beer. Pretty skeptical about this. Looks like cloudy piss. That makes me feel confident. You can hear a little bit of a pop. That means there was at least some carbonation. <sighs> Whoa, <laughs> smells like mothballs. Oh God. This one's very, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> that is not, not a pleasant smell. Oh my God, it's like burnt rubber and mothballs. Like if you could combine those two. <laughs> Ugh. It's kind of like old people or a retirement home. Um, I'm gonna try it reluctantly. It's in the taste too. Mm -mm. It's not horrible though. It, 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 uh, it smells worse than it tastes, but it also doesn't taste good. That's not staying inside me. I don't want that inside me. I'm gonna plug my nose and try it. 
Oh, that's better. Oh my God, it tastes like a gym sock. Just, just kind of tastes like death, smells like death, you know, or something that's about to go. It's very light. Um, I don't know, it doesn't really taste like a beer though. It just doesn't have much of a flavor at all. It's very flat, I'd say, um, in flavor tones. Maybe it just needed a little more time. Maybe the amylase extraction robbed it of its flavors, but, um, you know, I'd say, you know, check this out in a few more weeks and see if it changed. I don't think I would recommend this. If I bought this at a store, I would demand my money back. I think, uh, I haven't tried piss, but it might be better. The dandelion wine, yes, I did good. Andy lost, but you know, Andy put a lot more time. We just skipped around in the park for mine, but this is really nice. At the beginning of the year, I did a little collaboration with Make Something where you helped me make the frames for my glasses I was attempting to do. And now at the end of the year now, I thought we'd close it out and send him some of my beverage. It's kind of a thank you. So I'm gonna save him from this disgusting stuff and just send him some of the wine. So hopefully he enjoys it. Cheers. It's good. Thanks, Andy. Thanks how to make everything. Be sure to check out his channel, Make Something. He does a lot of woodworking. He made a wine rack for the bottle of wine I sent him. He has a whole variety of other woodworking projects, so be sure to check his channel out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.